Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss fuzzy C-means clustering algorithm in machine learning with a simple solved example. Before we proceed with the fuzzy C-means clustering algorithm, first we will understand what is clustering. Clustering is a distance-based unsupervised machine learning algorithm where the data points that are close to each other are grouped into a given number of clusters or groups. In this case, you can notice the given data points are divided into three clusters here. There are mainly two types of uh, clustering algorithms we have. The first one is known as hard clustering algorithm. In hard clustering, each data point is assigned to a single cluster. If you notice in this particular example, the given data set is divided into two groups and each of these particular data points either belong to one of those particular clusters. K-means and k metroid are then examples of uh, hard clustering algorithms. The second one is a soft clustering algorithm. In this case, each data point belongs to clusters with a certain probability, also known as membership values. If you notice this particular example, this particular data point, that is uh, the green data point, belongs to this particular cluster with a probability of uh, 0.97 and it belongs to this uh, second cluster with a probability of 0 0.03. The meaning of this one is this data point belongs to this cluster also, as well as it belongs to second cluster also. The same thing happens with other data points also. Fuzzy C means clustering algorithm is an example of a soft clustering algorithm. In this video, we will discuss fuzzy C means clustering algorithm in detail. The first step of fuzzy C means clustering algorithm is given the data points based on the number of clusters required, we need to initialize the membership table with random values. To understand this particular step, I will take a simple example. In this case, we have been given four data points. Each data point contains two components over here, or you can say that two features. Given this particular data points, based on the number of uh, required clusters, we need to initialize the membership table. Let us assume that uh, we need to divide this particular data into two clusters. So we need to create the membership table, something like this. The meaning of this particular point eight is, the data point one three belongs to this particular cluster one, with a probability of 0.8 here. Similarly, this particular data point 13 belongs to cluster number 2 with a probability of 0.2. The same thing with respect to other data points also. But all these particular data values, whatever we have entered in this uh, membership table are randomly entered. Only one thing we need to remember here is the sum of these probabilities should be equal to 1. For example, the probability of uh, this particular data point belonging to cluster 1 and cluster 2 is 0.8 and 0.2 respectively. If I add these two things, it should become 1 over here. The same thing should happen with all these particular data points. Once you initialize this particular membership table, the next thing is to calculate the centroid. To calculate the centroid, we will use this particular formula. The formula is phi ij is equal to summation of k is equal to 1 till n, where n is the number of data points mu i k raised to m multiplied by x k divided by summation of k is equal to 1 to n mu i k raised to m here, where mu is the membership value, m is the fuzziness parameter. Usually, we will take 2 as the value in this case and x k is the given data point and each data point contain two components. So, we need to calculate the each component of centroid separately here. So, v11 is the first component of first centroid that is the centroid of this particular cluster 1 here. To calculate this particular thing, uh, the value of i is equal to 1 and the value of uh, j is equal to 1 and uh, the right hand side we have summation of k is equal to 1 to n. The meaning of this one is k will go from 1, 2, 3 and 4 here because we have 4 data points. Mu i k that is uh, mu 1, 1 in the first iteration, mu 1, 1 is equal to 0.8 raised to m that is equivalent to 2 here. So that's the reason I have written 0.8 raised to 2 here. Multiplied by xk, that is the first component I will consider because I want to calculate the first component of this particular centroid that is equivalent to 1 here. So 0.8 raised to 2 multiplied by 1 plus mu i k, i is again 1, k is equivalent to 2 in the second iteration and m is equivalent to again 2 here. So uh, mu 1, 2, mu 1, 2 is nothing but what? 0.7 here raised to m that is equal to 2 multiplied by xk. xk is again the first component that is equal to 2 here. Similarly, we will write two more components here on the numerator side. 
on the denominator side we have only this particular membership values so we will add this particular membership values over here and once i solve this particular equation i will get 1.568 as the value here this is the first centroids first component similarly we will calculate the second component while calculating the second component this 1 2 4 and 7 were replaced with 3 5 8 and 9 here once I replace it and solve it, I will get the second component that is equivalent to 4.051 here. Similarly, we need to calculate the second centroid. Again, we need to use the first component separately and second component separately over here. And uh, every time we need to use these probabilities over here rather than using these probabilities in this case. If you notice this particular equation, the probabilities are 0.2 and the first component is equivalent to 1 here. The second probability is 0.3 and the component is equivalent to to here similarly we need to put all these particular values and once you solve it you will get 5.35 as the first component of second centroid similarly we will calculate the second component of uh, second centroid by replacing this particular uh, 1 2 4 7 with 3 5 8 and 9 over here once i solve this equation i will get 8.215 as the second component of second centroid so this will be the first centroid and this will be the second centroid. This is the second step of fuzzy Siemens clustering algorithm. So once you calculate the centroid, the next step is to calculate the distance between these data points to these particular centroids. Now how can we calculate the distance? To calculate the distance between data points to centroid, you can use any distance matrix. In this case, I'm going to use the Euclidean distance formula. If x1, y1 and x2, y2 are the two data points, the distance is always equivalent to square root of x2 minus x1 bracket square plus y2 minus y1 bracket square here. So in this case, I will try to calculate the distance from this particular first data point to each of these particular centroids here. So the first centroid is uh, this one. Square root of the data point is 1 here. 1 minus 1.568 bracket square plus 3 minus 4.051 bracket square here. So once I solve this particular thing, I will get 1.2 as the distance. Similarly, I will calculate the distance from this particular data point to the second centroid here that is D12 which is equivalent to square root of again 1 minus 5.35 bracket square plus 3 minus 8.215 that is the second component bracket square which is equivalent to 6.79 over here. Similarly, we will calculate the distance from second data point to each of these particular centroid. The first distance is equivalent to 1.04. The second distance is equivalent to 4.64 here. Similarly, we will calculate the distance from third and fourth data point to these centroids. The distances look something like this. So once you calculate these particular distances, this particular distance that is D11 and D12 is the distance of this particular data point to first cluster and second cluster respectively. Between these two, 1.2 is the smallest one. The meaning of this one is the first data point is assigned to first cluster uh, or you can say that the first centroid over here. So that is what I have written here. Similarly, if you look at these two values, this is this value and this value between these two, 1.04 is smaller here. The meaning of this one is the second data point is assigned to again first centroid here. And if you look at these two uh, distances, this distance is smaller. The meaning of this one is this particular data point is assigned to second centroid and so on. So once you do this particular assignment, we have uh, two centroids clusters over here the first cluster containing uh, the first data point as 1,3 and the second data point is 2,5 the second uh, cluster contains the two data points the first one is 4,8 and second one is 7,9 in this particular case once you calculate these particular distances based on these particular distances and centroids we need to update this particular membership uh, table here to update uh, this particular membership table we need to use this particular formula mu ik is always equivalent to summation of j is equivalent to 1 to n dki raised to 2 divided by dkj raised to 2 raised to 1 divided by m minus 1 to the whole power minus 1 over here now in this case k is the data point and i is the constant over here and j will go from 1 to the number of clusters here in this case, we have two clusters. So the value of uh, n is equal to 2. So in the first iteration, the value of j will be 1. And the second iteration, the value of j is equal to 2 over here. For the first data point, uh, we will try to update these particular probabilities here. 
mu11 is equal to the meaning of this one is what k is equal to 1 that is nothing but the first data point we are talking here and i is equal to 1 the meaning of this one is i am talking about this particular probability that is the probability with respect to first cluster over here now to update this part i think we need to solve this equation so in the first iteration the value of j is equal to 1 so this equation will become d k is equal to 1 i is equal to 1 d 1 1 d 1 1 is equal to how much d 1 1 we have already calculated that is equal to 1.2 divided by d k j k is equal to again 1 j is equal to 1 in the first iteration that is equal to d 1 1 that is again equal to 1.2 so 1.2 bracket square divided by 1.2 bracket square plus again the numerator will remain same because in this case we don't have any j here so 1.2 as it is divided by d k j k is equal to 1 j is equal to 2 so d12 d12 is equal to how much 6.79 here to the power 1 divided by m minus 1 m is equal to how much the value of m is uh, 2 here so 2 minus 1 to the power of minus 1 once i solve this particular thing i will get 0.97 over here so the meaning of this one is mu11 was previously 0.8 now it is equal to 0.97 over here now we will try to calculate this particular membership value with respect to first data point that is nothing but mu12 so the value of k is equal to 1 the value of i is equal to 2 so once i put this particular i and uh, k over here with respect to this particular equation i am going to get the value is equal to 0 0.03 over here the meaning of this one is previously the probability of uh, data point belonging to second cluster was 0 0.2 now it is equal to 0 0.03 over here Similarly, we need to calculate uh, the remaining uh, membership values for the second, third and uh, fourth data point. For a second data point, uh, the values will look uh, something like this. Mu21, Mu21 is nothing but what? The second data point and the first cluster over here. K is equal to 2 and I is equal to 1 in this particular case. Again, J will go from uh, 1 to N over here. In the first iteration, it will be 1.04 divided by 1.04 plus 1.04 divided by 4.64 over here. Raised to 1 divided by 2 minus 1 to the power of minus 1. If I solve it, I will get 0.95 over here. Similarly, we need to calculate uh, mu22. That is nothing but uh, second data points uh, uh, membership value with respect to second cluster over here. And once I solve this particular equation, I will get 0.05. These are the new membership values for the second data point. First one will be equal to 0.95 and the second membership value is equal to 0 0.05 over here. With the same note, we need to update it for the third and the fourth data point. The third data point membership values look something like this and the fourth data points membership values looks something like this. This is how the updated membership table looks like. Now, what is the meaning of this particular updated membership table is? If you look at this particular value, previously the value of this particular uh, data point that is a 1,3 belonging to first cluster was 0 0.8. Now it has been updated to 0.97. The meaning is uh, the probability of this data point that is 1,3 belonging to first cluster is now 0.97 here and belonging to second cluster is equal to 0 0.03. The same thing is applicable for all these particular data points. Once you get this particular updated membership table, in step number 5, we need to repeat step number 2, 3, 4 until these particular values will become constant or the difference is less than the tolerance value. Let us assume that the tolerance value is equal to 0 0.01. The meaning of this one is the difference between the calculated value and the previous value should be less than 0 0.01. If it is greater than 0 0.01, we need to update this particular membership values again and again over here. If you notice in this case, the calculated value is 0 0.97 and the previous value was 0 0.8. The difference is equal to 0 0.17, which is very high compared to this particular tolerance value. So we need to go back and then we need to calculate the centroid in the second step, distance in the second, third step, and we need to update this particular membership values in the fourth step. The same thing should be repeated again and again until the difference is less than the tolerance value or we will get the constant values over here. So in this video, I have discussed how fuzzy C-means clustering algorithm works with a simple example. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. 
press the subscribe button for more videos press the bell icon for regular updates thank you for watching